today's tutorial, we'll be going over how to configure the network settings on the Watson Mark II E4 model or the ET port device. We'll cover hardware installation, device detection, IP address configuration using either the device finder or the web interface, Wi-Fi configuration, which is optional, and simple device usage. Begin by ensuring that the ET port or E4 module is plugged into an Ethernet port. Installation of an ET port module is simple. Simply snap it into a DIN rail beside a Watson Mark II and use the included Jump Bus interface to connect the two devices. This interface carries both power and data, so it does not require any additional wiring. Ensure to connect an Ethernet cable to the bottom of the ET port. In the case of the E4 model of the Watson Mark II with the onboard display, it is possible to view the configured network parameters on the LCD. To do this, press the back button to enter the configuration menu, select configuration, and then select networking module. This screen will show the currently assigned IP address and the connection method. Scrolling down will show the net mask and the gateway assignment, as well as the method of obtaining the IP address. Press the back button repeatedly to exit out of the menus. An alternative method of finding the IP address is to use the Finder tool. This tool is useful with the ET port module or a Watson Mark II not equipped with the onboard display. The free Finder utility, available for download from our website, should run on a PC connected to the same network as the ET port or E4 Watson or directly connected to the meter. If there is no switch available, in most cases it is possible to connect a PC directly to the ET port or E4 Watson using a regular Ethernet cable. In this case, if there is no DHCP servers, both devices should assign themselves their own IP. This is known as Auto IP, and the IP addresses typically start with 169.254. After starting the Finder software, any Elcor devices on a local network will be displayed. The window may be cleared and refreshed by clicking the Find button. In certain cases, if there are more than one network adapter in the PC, the bound IP address may be changed to select the adapter which will be used for the scan. Typically, default is the recommended setting. When the device has been found, double-clicking on it brings up the IP configuration menu. By default, the IP address method is DHCP. If a static IP is desired, simply click on the static radio button and enter the desired IP address. You may also enter the subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS settings. Optionally, here is where the SSID and password may be entered to configure Wi-Fi. Note, Wi-Fi is only active when the Ethernet cable is not connected. To apply any changes, the password must be entered, which is admin by default. This password may be changed via the web interface, which we will discuss shortly. Clicking the Apply button will send the network configuration settings to the device. The display may clear for a moment, and the device should pop up when it has reset itself. You will be able to note the new settings. The Finder utility features a number of useful tools. By right-clicking on the found device, we can issue an Identify command to blink the network LED on the target device, we can copy the MAC address to the clipboard, copy the IP address to the clipboard, or open the default browser. In this case, we will copy the IP and paste it into our browser manually. We can paste the copied IP address to our web browser and thereby navigate to the device's built-in web server. The web pages for the E4 meter and external ET port are slightly different However, most of the configuration options and menus are identical. Setting up the cloud configuration is configured in another tutorial video. Here we will look at a final method to configure the network settings. By clicking on the network menu item, it will open a settings page. If prompted for a login, use admin for the username and admin for the password. 
Here, various network configuration items may be set, including NTP configuration, Wi-Fi configuration, and IP configuration. Similar to the Finder software, if a static IP address is desired, change the configuration settings and enter the desired IP, subnet, gateway, and DNS. After the IP address settings have been changed, click the Submit button to apply the changes. You must wait for the device to reboot itself for the changes to take effect. Remember, if the IP address has changed, you will need to change the address in your web browser to match the new IP address. Notice also that during this process, the address reported by the Elcor Finder software has also been updated. The devices will broadcast their configuration upon boot up, and this is detected by the Finder software. The E4 Watson Mark II and the ET port have many features, which we will cover at a later time. However, it is useful to demonstrate the live monitor page. Clicking on the monitor menu item will show the real-time values as measured by the meter. These readings are updated once per second by default. In the case of the ET port, it will only work if it detects a Watson Mark II meter connected to it with a Modbus address of 1. This is the default configuration for the Watson Mark II. By selecting the View Config option, the current settings of the connected meter will be displayed. For security reasons, it is not possible to change the meter configuration from this page. However, this can be done via the onboard display if equipped, or through any Modbus interface, including our free Modbus Commander software. The system menu may be used to access various system features of the device. This includes the ability to reboot the device, change the admin password, which is required by the Finder software as well as to access certain configuration web pages, to restore factory firmware defaults, and to change the firmware. Additional advanced configuration may be changed, but it is not covered in this video, and it is recommended not to change these settings. This concludes our tutorial on how to configure the Watson E4 and ET port devices. For additional product and technical support, please visit our website at www.elcor.net. Thank you.